Hello, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We're at chapter two right now. We're going to start on the hands-on portion of this class, and that involves import, editing, and organizing our 360 VR clips inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you're just tuning in, like I just mentioned, there's a whole chapter one that can give you some basics in how VR works up to this point, anywhere from shooting with a camera rig such as a GoPro Omni, all the way to understanding the stitching process and what happens before you bring it inside of Adobe Premiere Pro for your edit. So a couple things to keep in mind before we dive in. Number one, you can download the exercise files. There should be a link that you'll see uh, on the page where you access this course, you can download and follow along. Number two, you wanna be on Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. If you have access to the Creative Cloud, you can, you can easily update to the newest version. There were some significant changes in 2017 application. And last but not least, you know, we're working with Metal here and Metal's wonderful plugins inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you don't have those plugins installed in your system, what you want to do is head over to metal.com. If you go to the product section here, we want to go to the 360 VR plugins for Premiere Pro. We're going to be using the VR tools, the VR transitions, and the VR transitions too, along with the Skybox VR player. We're going to take a look at that free product from Metal. So you want all three of these. Don't worry about the prices if you simply go to each of these plugins pages. If I just single click here, you can download a demo to your system and get up and running with the transitions as well as the effects that we'll be using inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, later in chapter three, you're also going to want to go to the 360 VR plugins for After Effects and make sure you get the Skybox Studio version two and the demo also installed in your system if it's not there. But that. The updated Premiere Pro CC 2017 are fantastic metal plugins. Along with the project files downloaded, we are ready to go. So what do we need to do? We need to launch Premiere Pro. I have it already installed down here on my PC. So you want to go into your applications folder if it's not down here on your PC or on your dock on your Mac and just give it a double click from that location or a single click from this area here. Premiere Pro is going to launch and it's going to trigger us to create a new project. Here we're going to go and choose a new project. And I'm gonna call this Intro to 360 VR with Metal. I'm gonna make sure that I'm saving this location of these files. I'm just gonna browse and I'm gonna put this on the desktop. And I'm just gonna choose Select Folder right now. I'm gonna keep all the default settings as the same and I'm gonna choose OK. And right away, I'm now inside of Premiere Pro in the default workspace, the editing workspace. So keep in mind that that's exactly where we want to be. Now, when most people import material into Premiere Pro, they do it from the project panel. And there's a very simple way that we could do this. We could go down to the project panel and click on the accent grab key or the tilde key to make this window bigger. And then if we press or double click there in the import project panel, we can go somewhere in our system and basically bring in these clips. However, I'm gonna encourage you guys not to do that. There is a preferred method for importing clips inside of Premiere Pro that you should know about. And to access it, you wanna go to the window menu and bring up your media browser. You can see the shortcut for that is Shift H. This has some advantages to use. Number one, your operating system can't see a lot of different types of footage. Not to say that it can't see the footage that we're using right now, but it can't see a lot of different types of footage, even like red files. And Premiere Pro can. So to work inside the media browser, we're able to see our clips before we bring them or import them in. So I highly recommend that you use the media browser for import. Where you want to head, I'm actually just going to expand this view a little bit so we can see it better. So wherever your exercise files are, you want to basically open up that metal project exercise folder. And just a little tip here, if we're gonna go back here, if we wanted to, or this is where we commonly stored our footage, we could right click right now and just make sure that we add this to favorites. Mine says remove because it's already set as a favorite. Okay, so that's something that you can do and then you can easily access it from here at all times. You guys might not have to actually walk into your local drives right now and head to hopefully your desktop or your downloads files in order to find this footage. So. This wherever you placed your footage is where you want to navigate to. We want to bring in footage from our 360 import folder. I'm just going to click on that. And you can see over here on the right hand side, this window populates with the footage that we'll be working with throughout this course from now on. So I can, first of all, hover over one of these clips and get a sense for what's in there. We can select all of these clips. So with this one clip selected, I'm going to press control A, and this is going to select all of these clips. Now, I want to make a mention of these new ingest 
options that we have in Premiere Pro as of CC 2015. Ingest can allow us to do a number of things, and it could be really helpful for VR workflow if you have a lot of heavy footage, let's say 4K footage that you are streaming from your drive. One thing that you can do upon Ingest is to essentially from this Ingest settings menu, you can choose to create things such as copies, you can transcode your media, or you can create proxies. And how proxies could help, or approximations, is that they'll create smaller files on your system in the background, which you can connect to in Premiere Pro and do the majority of your editing using these proxy files. And then when you're ready, you can connect back to the master clips for things such as color correction or tracking that require a lot of the information from the master clips or the full resolution clips. So I wanted to make a note that this ingest, these ingest options, these ingest options can be very helpful for your VR workflow, and it's something that you should investigate a little bit more. So I'm just going to cancel out of there, and with these clips still selected, I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to choose to import. I want to make sure to right-click, because double-clicking is going to get me nowhere, or at least not bring my footage into the project panel. But by right-clicking and choosing import, all those files have now been brought into the project panel inside of Premiere Pro. So you can see it populate right here. Now I'm a big fan of keeping my footage organized. So I recommend that we just select all of our clips right now. I'm gonna click one and then press Control A or Command A on a Mac. I'm gonna now just drag all of them down to this little folder icon and it's gonna place it inside a bin. Bin is just a fancy word in video editing terminology for your folder. And inside this bin, I'm gonna basically just call this my VR travel footage, because that's what we're working with. Okay, and that's just a nice way to keep those clips organized. Another thing that I like to do in the project panel, and one thing you could do is if you double click, this will now open the bin where we can see our clips as thumbnails. And there are actually several ways to open a bin, so let me just close that. And this time I want to control double click the bin, or command double click in the Mac. And what it does is it opens the bin inside this window. If we ever need to get back to the project panel, where all of our bins would exist, or let's say even our sequences, we can just click this arrow button. I'm just gonna control double click again to go inside of it. I'm gonna quickly switch from this view. I'm gonna to go to my list view. And list view has a couple things that you should bring up. One is, there's these flyaway menus in Premiere Pro. If you click here, we can first of all reveal a couple things. I wanna reveal thumbnails for these clips. If you don't see this preview area that I have, you're gonna click and also reveal the preview area. One great thing about this list view is first of all, we can come over here to our lovely little labels for our clips. And then based on, let's say their certain properties, we can identify some with certain colors and then others with other colors. So if you had a documentary, what you could do is let's say take all of your interview footage and make that a particular color and then make all of your B-roll footage another color. So you'll notice here in this project, I've got two different frame rates, one at 30 frames per second and the other at 29.97. So I'm gonna select all of the clips by clicking and shift clicking the ones that are 29.97. I'm gonna now right click anywhere on the clip and go to label and make these all forest. So they're all gonna be green. So just so I know in the timeline that these are my 29.97 clips. And then here for the remainder of the 30 frames per second clips, I'm just gonna select all of these, right click, I'm gonna choose label and make that a completely different color. Let's make it rose. You can basically color code your timeline, which can go a long way to keeping you organized when you start to build your sequences inside of Premiere Pro. There's a few things that we noted about importing our clips into Premiere Pro and do a little bit of organization to get us up and running for the next movie.